morning, we're going to be in the, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We haven't had a communion service in quite a while. Uh, I, we really weren't for sure exactly how to do a communion service during the uh, pandemic and uh, passing everything around, people inside, people outside. We just weren't really for sure how to do it, so uh, we didn't really feel comfortable doing it. But now that we can have one, uh, I'm excited about this opportunity once again, and uh, we can get back into the practice of, of having the Lord's Supper, having communion, as we call it. But I, I want us to look this morning at what it is. It's been a, a long time since we've actually had it, and it's been a while since since I've been able to uh, go through what the Lord's Supper is and communion. I like to do this at least once a year for us to be able to see what it is and understand more of the importance of it and why we do it. And so the first thing we must understand as we go into this and about why we practice it is we, we practice it because it is we're told to. It's an ordinance given by Jesus Christ, a command given by Jesus Christ. It's a command that Jesus told us in the Gospels and given to, given to the followers of His that we were to practice. If you go through the Gospels and you see the early Christian church, you can see this Christian ceremony, the Lord's Supper. And it all has its roots all the way back to the Jewish Passover festival, a festival that the Jewish people would celebrate when they, would, when they left uh, to celebrate when they left Egypt and the Lord watched over them as the firstborn Egyptians were, were killed. The, the Jewish people were spared because of what God did for them. And just before Jesus was betrayed, just before He was handed over to the Romans to be crucified, He celebrated this freedom meal or this last supper as we've come to know it in today's world. And He celebrated this meal with His twelve closest disciples, His twelve apostles there. And as he did this, he also turned it into a symbolism, uh, a symbolism meaning the, the death and the, the death that he would have soon for us to remember. And so at the Passover festival that night, he came and he had this supper or he had this dinner with them. And he came to them and he had the unleavened bread and he had the wine. And these were symbols for the Passover. But Jesus Christ took these symbols... And he said, these will no longer be symbols of the Passover, as to say, but they will be symbols of what Jesus Christ has done and is going to do for us. The unleavened bread and the wine were no longer going to be symbols of the deliverance of slavery from the Egyptians. But it would show Jesus Christ now as being this Passover lamb that was sacrificed, that would be sacrificed, so that all of us, all the people in the world, might be delivered from the slavery of sin, in the slavery of death that we are all in. And so as the leader of this, uh, of this, Jesus Christ came and He instituted this new ceremony. And so this morning I want us to look and I want us to see what the meaning of the ceremony is and why we celebrate it and why we are to remember. We can look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning in verse 23 it says... For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which He was betrayed took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body." For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we, could, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. So what is Paul telling the people here in Corinthians? What is he telling the people in Corinth about the Lord's Supper? What is he letting them know? Well, the central ideal of all of this is this. We're proclaiming to one another and to a lost world that Jesus died, yet rose again, 
and one day will return for all of us. So the main ideal of this is a remembrance. It's a telling. It's a letting the world know, reminding us that Jesus Christ died for us. He died for everyone. He died for us as we come together and celebrate this morning. We have to remember that He died, yet He rose again and that one day He will come back and He will return for us again. It's a remembrance of that, but it's a remembrance of so much more of what He has done. It was a standing provision against the lack of memory or our forgetfulness that we have. God knows mankind. God knows us. God knows that we have a tendency to forget. And I'm not talking about that tendency to forget when you get up off the couch and you walk in the kitchen and you go, why am I in here? <laughs> I'm not talking about that type of memory. I'm talking about the memory we tend to forget about who Jesus Christ is and what He's done for us and what God did for us through Jesus Christ. We tend to forget that. We tend to think that we can do things on our own. So Jesus Christ and God and all His wisdom knew this. And so He came together and instituted this communion, this Lord's Supper, so that you and I would remember. So it is a time of remembrance for us. So the big question then comes, what are we remembering today? What are we remembering as we go through this? Well, the first thing that we're remembering is we're remembering His saving sacrifice, or this is my body the saving sacrifice for you and for me. On the night that Jesus was arrested, on the night that He was betrayed by one of His closest followers, He took the bread and He broke it and He said, This is My body which is to be given for you. This is My body that is to be given for you. If you go back to the Jewish Passover, Passover feast, bread was eaten that was made without yeast. It had been made that way because they were in a hurry as they were leaving Egypt. And so the addition of a lamb was being slaughtered to avert the angel of death. And Jesus said this. He said, this is my body. This is the sacrifice that's going to be made for you. My body, the bread represents my body. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 3.18, he tells us this. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive, but made alive by the Spirit. You see, Christ died in our place. Christ died in our place. He was the Passover lamb. He was the one that was sacrificed. His body was given so that we could have freedom from our sins. So as we come together and we partake and we eat of the bread, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. We remember the sacrifice of His body for us so that we would not be free and we could be free from our sins. So, we remember His sacrifice. We remember His body broken and bruised upon that cross, beaten beyond recognition upon that cross today. Let us remember that, not just today, but every day, the sacrifice that it took so that you and I could have freedom. And then he says, this is my covenant with you, or this is my blood for you. The wine represents his blood. It represents a covenant that we made. You see, God made a covenant with his people in Egypt, and he told them, that He would bring them out of Egypt. And He told them that night that if they would put blood over their their doorpost, that the angel of death would fly over their house and they would be ignored through there. There was a covenant made. And Jesus is saying, I'm making a covenant with you now that says there is a better sacrifice. There is one that is permanent. There is one that would take away all your sins. There is a covenant. There is a sacrifice that can take away all of your sins and all of death. And that's what the wine, the cup, the juice we drink, it represents His blood. It represents the fact that Jesus died to pay the penalty due for our sins. He paid the penalty due for our sins. The sins of the world were paid because of His blood. If we trust Him and believe in Him and understand what God did through Him, then we can have this freedom and we can be completely pardoned from our sin. When we drink of the cup, we remember Jesus Christ's sacrifice in His blood, in the covenant that was made for us. It's a covenant in which God says, I will be your God and you will be my people. And it's all made possible because of Jesus Christ. So you have 
the bread that represents the body beaten and broken. You have the, the, the juice, the wine that represents the blood, the sacrifice, the covenant made by God through Jesus Christ. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do it in remembrance of me. It is a commemoration of what Jesus Christ has done. It is a commemoration. The Lord's Supper is not a new offering. It's not a new sacrifice. This partaking today will not save you. It is a commemoration, a remembering of the things that will save you, the thing that did save you, the thing that Jesus Christ did that gives us hope of salvation. It is a remembering of the one sacrifice for all of our sins. It is a remembering that it was done once and for all through Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. He said it carefully. He said it twice to them. We eat this bread, we drink this wine, we drink this juice as a remembrance of Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that celebrating this reminds us of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. A sacrifice that we all too often forget in our lives. We complain about the small sacrifices that we have to make every day. We complain about the things that happen to us. And we ignore the incredible sacrifice of Jesus' body and the blood that He gave for us on the cross. And that's what communion is about. Us remembering that. Us coming together and saying, Jesus, we remember the sacrifice You made. We remember that this is Your body. This is Your blood. This is the sacrifice that You made for us. It's a commemoration today. It's a time of remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done. And it's a thing that we should do as a community. It's a thing we should do as a church. Paul says that the Lord's Supper is a teaching given by Christ and handed to all of us. It's handed to you, the plural version there. The commands to eat and drink are in the plural there. It's for us a community of believers to come together as one and say, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's what holds us all together. It's the bond that puts us all together. It's the one thing that we can have in common no matter where we're at in the world. You can travel from one end of the world to the other end. And when you walk into a room with other Christians, you have an immediate bond and you can feel it because of Jesus Christ. In communion, this Lord's Supper is made. It is created to help us know this bond that we have, and we only have it through Jesus Christ. The covenant binding us together creates a community, not just in this church, not in just liberty, not just in North Carolina, but throughout the world. His sacrifice created a community for all of us believers. And you can go anywhere in the world and find other believers and have things in common through Jesus Christ. That is what we remember today. And then finally, we remember a future hope today. Paul told them that we're remembering that one day He will come back for us. You and I can look around this world today and we can see all the trouble, we can see all the pain, we can see the pandemic, the deaths, everything that's going on and you and I can still have hope. Why? Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross because He's promised us that one day He will come back and we will spend an eternity for, with Him in heaven. Paul says the celebration is one to remember until He returns. Jesus Christ will return one day to this earth, not as He came as a little babe, but He'll come as our King and as our Savior. He will come boldly in the clouds for all of us. He will judge the earth and He will reward the righteous and He will punish the wicked and all wrongs will be set right one of these days. You see, God has a plan and that plan was Jesus Christ on the cross. We wonder and we look at why everything goes on in the world today and we wonder why Jesus Christ or why God lets it happen. God says one day all things will be set straight. All things will be set straight. Everyone will be judged according to their righteousness. And the only way we can have that true righteousness is through Jesus Christ. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, but Jesus Christ's sacrifice can give us the true righteousness we need to spend eternity with Him. And that is the hope that we have. 
And by celebrating, we're proclaiming to the world and letting them see the hope and letting them see that we're proud of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we share with them that you too can have this hope today. That you too can have hope today. It's a hope that is not just reserved for us, but it is a hope that is available to anyone that will accept Jesus Christ, that will look and say He is God's only Son, that He paid the sacrifice for us, that He rose up from the grave, and they believe that He can take their sins away and that He can give them eternal life. Anyone that believes in that and is willing to confess and follow Him can have this hope in eternal life. And that's what we remember. We remember Jesus Christ. But unfortunately in our world today, we've forgotten the reverence and the respect we need to have for Jesus Christ. We look at this all too many times and we take it for granted. We look at it all too many times and we say, well, He did this for someone else or, or thank you Jesus, I, I, I accepted you a long time ago, I don't want to have anything else to do with you again. The Lord's Supper is made to remind us of the holiness of Jesus Christ. For His sacrifice and His sacrifice alone was the only one that was good enough for me and you. No other man's sacrifice would have done. Only Jesus Christ and His holiness would have done it. And so as we come together to remember today, I ask you to remember His holiness. Because that is something that we have all too often forgotten, is His holiness. We have forgotten that holiness that He gives us. And so we need to remember that today. As we get ready to participate in communion this morning, I want to remind you of a few things. At our church, it's open communion. What does that mean? That means that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're open to have communion with us today. You do not have to be a member in our church. We, all we ask is that you have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior today. That's all we ask, and that is between you and God. That is not for man to judge today. That is not for me or anyone else to judge. We ask that you come before Him and know Him as your Savior before you partake today. I also ask that you have the right attitude today. What does that mean? That means that you remember three things. Remember what the Lord has done for you in the past. Show your reverence and your respect for His death. Show that you have current communion with Him now and you have, that you know His holiness now. And prepare for the future that you will live your life in a way that shows Jesus Christ to others until He comes. That's what we asked, is that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and that you remember your reverence and His holiness and that you will do what you can to proclaim His word until He comes. But then Paul told them that you need to examine yourself. And this is between you and God. His main point here was that the observance ought to cause everyone who participates to stop and examine themselves. Stop and ask yourself, am I drinking in an unworthy manner? Well, what is unworthy? Unworthy means that you understand that there are things in your life that are keeping you from Jesus Christ today. The answer is that you know that only through Jesus Christ can you have salvation for your sins and you need to come to Him and you need to ask that He help you see those sins and ask for forgiveness of their sins. Are you in a right relationship with the Lord today? He asks you to come and examine and confess. And that's what He asks today. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, that God is quick to forgive when we ask Him for forgiveness. And so I ask that you do that today. We should have a sense of our own unworthiness this morning. But we should also have a sense of God's grace and God's mercy and God's love because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. This awareness of God's love should bring us together, but it should also bring us closer to Him. What we're about ready to celebrate is not a ritual, it's not a ceremony. It's fellowship with Jesus Christ. It's a remembrance of Jesus Christ. It's the importance of knowing what He did for us. It reminds us of the reverence and the holiness in Jesus Christ. So now I ask that as we go through this in just a minute that you'll join us in communion. But before we do that, I want to have a time of prayer this morning. I want to have a time of prayer. This is a lot different. You'll have to excuse me. We normally have our deacons come forth at this time and we pass things out. But at this time, I want us to have a word of prayer instead. 
And this is your time to ask God to examine you, show you maybe what it is in your life. The altars will be open if you want to come up and pray. Pray where you're at, pray in your car, online, wherever you may be. God listens to your prayers, but the altars will be open. And let's take a time to get serious and remember what Jesus Christ has done for us before we partake this morning. So let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us, for what you did for us on the cross. And as we remember today, Lord, Father, we ask that you forgive us. Father, we know that the Bible says all of us have sinned. And so, Father, we come before you this morning, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, we come to you knowing that we have sinned against you, Lord, and we ask for your forgiveness, knowing that you said that you would forgive us. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made, for his body being given for us. Father, for his blood being given for us, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you accepted his gift, and on the third day, Lord, that you raised him from the dead, that he is now alive with you in heaven. And one day, Lord, that he will come back for all of us. We thank you for that today. Father, help us this morning as we come together. Father, help us remember you. But Lord, don't let it stop here. Father, I pray that it will not stop this morning right here in this room. But Father, I pray that our remembrance of you will go with us and that every moment of every day we will remember who you are and what you've done for us. Father, be with us and help us this morning as we remember you. In your name we pray. Amen. Like I said, this is a whole lot different today. You should have a cup. You should have on top of that cup, if you lift up the little uh, tray on top, you'll have some bread. Don't eat yet. Don't eat. <laughs> but if you'll go ahead and get that, this isn't the normal bread we pass out. But 1 Corinthians says this. 1 Corinthians says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. We give him thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Before we partake this morning, before we have the eating of the bread and the partaking of the bread this morning, I've asked Brother Frank if he would give a prayer of blessing for the bread this morning. And then after he gives a prayer of blessing, we'll ask the Lord to bless this and we will partake together. Brother Frank, will you pray for us this morning? Amen. Amen. So Jesus Christ said, the body of our Lord Christ, which is given for us, let us all eat together. After that, it says in verse 25, it says, in the same manner... He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as you have the cup, before we partake of the cup, I want to ask Brother Joe this morning if he'll lead us in a prayer to bless the drinking. Amen. As we come together this morning, we drink, 
This symbolizes the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ through which we can have forgiveness of our sins. So let us drink together this morning. As I said, this is different. We normally stand and sing a hymn. But this morning instead, I just want to ask that you all stand. If you go ahead and stand for us. Those of you that are inside, don't try to stand up in your vehicles. But those of you that are inside, go ahead and stand. We'll be dismissed this morning. But what I want you to understand is this. It's somber. It's holy. But it's also a time of celebration. I want you to go out this morning in remembrance of Jesus Christ, and celebrate what He has done for you. Remember His holiness. Remember and be reverent in what He has done for you. But don't go out with a sad face because Jesus Christ will one day come back for all of us and it is a time of celebration for all of us this morning. So as we dismiss this morning, we will not have a song or a prayer, but I dismiss you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning that you will go out and celebrate and remember what He has done for all of you today. You're dismissed.